Hey everybody, this is GGB coming back in this second quarter of action. It's a tie ball game. It's, it's a tie ball game. I'm really excited. Uh, I thought this game was going to be a good game. It's It's been a good game so far. 7-7. Seven, seven. We've had some not great offensive possessions. We've had two turnovers so far. We've had a punt. Uh, but I don't know, but you, I, I kind of like some defense at the very least. I don't like it when the offense just... Punches it back and back, but brings up an important third and one. Does Patrick Mahomes go with the run underneath, or does they decide to just throw it again? They do decide to throw it. They bring a blitz. They fired it literally directly to number 35, which I don't remember who the name of it is, honestly. I don't know who 35 is, but I don't know if they go kick. I Honestly, I get aggressive. I go for it on the run. I thought if they were going to pass it, I go for it on the run here with Joe Mixon, and they decide to... They probably are going to go on the run with Joe Mixon. They bring three tight ends out and Andrew Beck onto the field. Perfect run formation. They go run up the middle with Andrew Beck. First play, Andrew Beck's been involved, not as a blocker. He picks up the first down. Good. I mean, it turns out to be a great decision, run with Andrew Beck. And Andrew Beck, to be honest, I didn't expect him to be very involved. I mean, the Cardinals don't typically use a fullback normally, uh, let alone... They're not going to use one that's not especially talented. But shotgun here with Joe Mixon directly behind him. It might be a run. They do not go run here. Fires it. Ooh, incomplete. Uh, a nice pass-up break up there. But, yeah, we're going back to what I was saying, the Cardinals don't typically use a fullback. Andrew Beck isn't, like, super great. So it, was, it wasn't – I wouldn't find it surprising if they never used him. But they've been – actually they used him a lot last episode. And then, obviously, the – Big run on fourth and one. They split Joe Mixon out wide on the second and ten. They bring a blitz. And he gets sacked. Well, he doesn't get sacked. Oh, he actually got that pass out, and he completed it for a yard. That is insane. I thought that was going to be 100% a sack, or at the very least it was going to be an incomplete pass. But, man, Mahomes got hammered on that play. Brings up a third and nine. And, yeah, if you don't get it here, you kick the field goal. Uh, it's not like the fourth and one where you just like, uh, I think we could go for it on fourth and one. Yeah, unless you get eight yards here, you kick this field goal. If you don't pick up the first down. Now, if I'm Mahomes, I'm looking for my big target, my big man who's been extreme. Well, I don't know if he's been extremely reliable, but he's been extremely reliable. He was extremely reliable gas game. Mr. Mark Andrews. This is who I go to here. Uh, shotgun in here from they bring a little bit of let's He fires it. And gets a completion to Tyler Lockett. So I was wrong. They go to their number one receiver, Tyler Lockett. He has faith in him. Tyler Lockett's an interesting player in the NFL because he really is a really fast guy. And he's really mastered that tiptoe inbounds, getting your feet in. He's done a great job of that in his career. And it's good confidence in Tyler Lockett here early on. I probably would have gone to Mark Andrews, but he seemed to be covered. So, I mean, I would have probably gone. He was my number two option, definitely, unless I could get it to Joe Mixon out of the backfield, who has been extremely productive in the passing game here today. Shotgun here from Mahomes, although it could be a run considering the running backs. Like, well, never mind. He splits out wide. They bring a little bit of a blitz. He has time. He fires it to a wide open Tyler Lockett, who walks into the end zone. Third, probably a 14-7 ball game, barring the extra point, and Tyler Lockett gets his first receiving touchdown of the day. And two of their better offensive players have gotten touchdowns here early on, and what I loved about the Big 12, honestly, watching them, outs like, you did you notice what the SEC did? Uh, a lot. And I mean, like, a lot, a lot. They relied heavily on Julio Jones. OBJ had one catch. Mike Evans has zero. Uh, the tight ends don't have any catches. So, yeah, it's just been not great offensively, if I can say that. Uh... There's been some serious downsides uh, for this offense or here early on. It's just, it's been interesting. I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. It's been an interesting chain of events. It's, they haven't used a lot of their receiving threats, which is interesting to me because they have good tight ends in Hunter Henry and Jared Cook and Evan Ingram. They have Mike Evans, who they have not gone to yet. They've only gone to OBJ once, and yet they're still only down by seven points. And it's just, it seems like outside of that one drive, which was a lot of Nick Chubb and uh, Alvin Kamara, and I'm going to be honest, again, he was great on that drive, and it was 
it was Julio Jones. A returnable here. And he brings it up to about the 22-yard, 23-yard line. Decent enough return by Tredavious White. Tredavious White, by the way, is the returner. I'm pretty positive of that. Dak Prescott takes the field. And honestly, I mean, last drive was good. It was really good. I'm, I'm really impressed with the last drive. But uh, outside of that, it's been lackluster. It's been forgettable. Maybe that. Maybe the last drive, they figured it out offensively. And defensively, you've got to step it up and figure out what they did last drive that was so good against you. Malcolm Brown seems to be on the field. He's a good run stopper. Uh, it looks like a shotgun pass. It looks like it's going to be a pass here by Dak Prescott. They actually go run with Alvin Kamara, who they decided to go with early here. But Alvin Kamara now. Alvin Kamara doesn't been extre extremely explosive off the ground. As you can see, two rushes for your three yards. But what Alvin Kamara brings you that Nick Chubb doesn't is his explosiveness through the air. If you've watched the Saints at all over the past few years, you notice how explosive Alvin Kamara can be a passing threat. Let's see. It might be a little bit of a blush here by the Big 12. They do bring a little bit of a blitz. He gets pressure, and it's going to be a sack by Earl Thomas III. And Earl Thomas is great at that and brings up a third and 17. And the Big 12 have looked on point here early on. Outside of that Mark Andrews fumble on last drive, which the defense didn't seem to have an answer for, defense has looked on point. Outside of that at one drive, the defense has looked really good here early on. They have obviously have that pick by Nick Kwiatkowski. But, yeah, I mean, they really have looked good. I would, the only thing I'm worried about is Jerry Hughes and uh, Emmanuel Agba have not been able to get pressure on the four-man rush, which I don't think anyone expected them to, though. The, big tw the SEC offensive line is so good, I just don't expect them to get serious pressure. Tech Prescott goes shotgun here. He has plenty of time to scan the field. He really has forever. He launches it downfield. He's going to have a wide open out. Amari Cooper is going to walk in for the touchdown. It's just how it's praising this defense. And this is the problem with that defense. It, I'm a, yeah, no, it's Amari Cooper. This is the problem with the defense if you're the Big 12. It was a great play. It was a great play. The offensive line held up extremely well, but... This is the problem with the Big 12 defense. If you don't bring a blitz, you are not going to get pressure on the quarterback. Uh, the defensive line is not good enough. It's not like the Mac where you could not bring pressure and you could still get uh, pressure on the QB if you were the Mac. Like, there are a lot of teams can do that because they have great pass rushers. Uh, they don't. The, the Big 12 just doesn't have that. So you have to bring, bring pressure. If you want to get after the QB, which he could have done there on the third and seventeen, extra point, it's up and good by Josh Lambeau, and it's 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 gonna it's a tie ball game. After that, uh, I was just complaining I haven't seen any deep shots down the field. That was a great deep shot by um, by Dak Prescott and Amari Cooper, and uh, Big Twelve gets to try and come back and match that. No, what you heard there was me throwing my controller on the ground because I'm an idiot. So, yeah, I mean, it's been extremely good. After those first few drives where it seemed like they were getting their feet under them, it's been a lot of offensive production. Josh Lambeau to kick it off. Uh, the Big 12 defense has got to figure that problem out 100%. Uh, how to get pressure on the QB is going to be a big thing moving forward. If you can't get pressure with your four men, it's going to be it's gonna be hard to win this football game if Jerry Hughes and Emmanuel Ogba can't get going. But... Patrick Mahomes returns to take the field, and this man is the reason. If you're going to win this game, he has to be the reason why. Number six, and he has been so far. Mark Andrews touchdown, obviously, the Tyler Lockett touchdown. And he hasn't been doing anything that amazing. He has been getting it to open receivers, which I don't know if you need him to do much more. Considering how open they've been here early on now, they could get a lot closer, and he might need to pull out some of his heroics with escaping the pocket and finding an open man. Uh, but he's been extremely solid here. It's just a simply game manager. But shotgun here for by, by Patrick Mahomes. They bring a little bit of a blitz. He, has, he scrambles out. He scrambles out to the other side. He gets it. To Atani Hemondola, who picks up his first catch of the ball game, only picks up about one yard on that insane scramble, and this is what the SEC Giants have that the Big Twelve doesn't—a four-man pass rush that can seriously threaten a QB. Now they did bring the blitz there, but like I want you to look at that defensive line. It's 
basically all superstar characters are inside of a, just a superstar player. So uh, Mahomes has time. He fires it to an open Mark Andrews. Uh, it's going to be hard to get pressure if you're the Big 12. It just really is. You just don't have the players that the SEC does. I could see the SEC, like Miles Garrett or Von Miller, like getting off of the player and getting after the QB. It, I mean, it's very possible. It's likely. Look at that. Four superstar X-Factor players. Shotgun here by Patrick Mahomes. He goes play action. He has the time. He fires it to an open Tyler Lockett. Uh, that time is Sterling Shepard. So, again, he's been spreading the ball out, and it's been nice. That's the SEC. Now, the SEC had, obviously, that huge, huge play to Omar Cooper. And they do have a great stable of receivers, so it's going to be, if one of them's not working, like Mike Evans seems to have been locked down so far, you have Julio Jones, you have Amari Cooper, you have OBJ. So it's not like you're going to have any shortage of receivers to work with there. But, yeah, I mean, the Big 12 has also, it's been using its receivers relatively well. Now, we've yet to see Marquise Hollywood Brown, so I'm going to be excited to see use him, them use him a little bit more. One tight end set here with uh, Mark Andrews. They bring a little bit of blitz. He has time. He fires it to an open Mark Andrews. But now again, there's a flag, so that could be personal foul. Roughing the passer by the defense. Big mistake there by Von Miller. And that's going to give him a first and 10 on the opposite 17-yard line. So, again, nice Calm down drive by the Big 12. And I, you like to think this helps your defense, but you did this last time, and your defense just let up a huge play on 3rd and 17. But, again, they got them to a 3rd and 17. So if you can just figure out how to stop them defensively, I think you'll be good. It gives them a little bit more time to figure it out. Shotgun here by Patrick Mahomes. They bring a little bit of blitz. He fires it to an open Tyler Lockett, who makes it a little bit. <laughs> he breaks the tackle, brought it to the 4-yard line. So first and goal here for this. Big 12 offense has been really productive. It really has been extremely productive here. Not sure Davis White have five tackles, but you know what that means. It means corners are being forced to tackle. They're not being locked down. The receivers aren't being locked down. So this is a weird three receiver set. You're done by the going. Fires it short underneath to, I believe that was to Marquise Hollywood Brown, trying to find him on the first play, but it was broken up. So second and goal. It's the goal line. You should be running in here with Joe Mixon, but you I guess you have no faith in Joe Mixon. You haven't even run it with him this drive, I just realized. Uh, but if you're not going to run it, which I do think they're going to run it here, three tight end set with Andrew back on the field. Although they could go past a little bit of a play action here. The goo will run up the middle. Uh, Joe Mixon picks it up to the – actually, Chris Carson. Chris Carson comes onto the field for his first snaps, although I believe he was on the field early in the ball game with his two running back set that was used like once. But third and goal, two-yard line. It's going to be interesting. Do you go run here again with Chris Carson? They decide not to. They go a lot wide. Not five wide because you have Joe Mixon next to you, but you go a lot wide. They bring a little bit of blitz. He fires it to an open, I believe, Sterling Shepard. So third different player to get a touchdown for this Big 12 team. All through the air, by the way. And the way, if you were wondering who those people were, Sterling Shepard, Tyler Lockett, and... Uh, Mark Andrews all have a touchdown now for the SEC. You have one on the ground with Nick Chubb, and you have uh, one through the air with that huge Amari Cooper touchdown. But again, this Big 12 offense has been, I don't know, it seemed impossible to stop here. I mean, you haven't had any big-time plays, but it's just been, it's been a whole bunch of little dink and dunks underneath. Kick is up and good by Justin Tucker, making it a seven-point game. And it's just, the offense has been amazing here. Now, I got to be honest, it was disappointing. It was a disappointing offense against the Mac. They made some huge mistakes late in that game. The pick by Mahomes almost set up the Mac. They set up the Mac to get a touchdown and make it a three-point game. And then they punted the ball away. Uh, but the offense here early on, the Mac held in there a lot of part because the Big 12 offense couldn't get it going. And that, that's good. Some credit to the Mac defense and some... Sort of, uh, I don't know how to say it, but insult to the Big 12 offense. But it's been insanely good here early on today. Justin Tucker's kick is off and returnable here by uh, Tredavis White, who brings it up to about the 27-yard line, 29-yard line. Wow. So good positive return by there by Tredavis White. Gives his offense some pretty good field position. 
Dak Prescott retakes the field. And, I mean, he's been really solid here today. Uh, he has that one pick to Nick Kwiatkowski, but I haven't been able to say Nick Kwiatkowski's name since the first quarter. I think the linebacker core for this team has been extremely good, considering I thought that was probably a weakness coming into this game. Nick Kwiatkowski, I know, is a great player, but I thought maybe the rookies and Jordan Brooks and Kenneth Murray Jr. might provide some mistakes. They've been both been extremely solid here early on. So Dak Prescott goes shotgun here with, I believe, Alvin Kamara in the backfield. They go pass to Julio Jones again. And it's just been, it's been the Julio Jones show early on today. Uh, I'm not saying you're wrong if you're the SEC Giants. I actually think it's not a bad plan at all to go to Julio Jones a lot. Again, he's completed about eight passes. Four of them have been to Julio Jones. You do the math there. So it looks like it might be a little bit of a blitz here by the Big 12. Uh, they back out of it. So four-man rush. He fires it out to Alvin Kamara, who picks up about nine yards. And uh, actually 10 yards. He picks up the first down. Alvin Kamara has been extremely good through the air. And it's been interesting. They didn't use Alvin Kamara a lot in the playing game. They really didn't. They used mostly Nick Chubb. They used a little bit of Derrick Henry, but they basically didn't use Alvin Kamara at all. Shotgun here for Dak Prescott. They bring a little bit of a blitz. He has time, though. He fires it underneath. He's broken up to Alvin Kamara. Nice defense there. Uh, brings up a second attempt. But as I said before, didn't use Alvin Kamara a lot. And I think it's actually to the benefit of the SEC. I thought the SEC had a great receiving uh, running back core. And I think it's one of the best running back cores in these games. Uh, empty set here for Dak Prescott, so 100% of throw. Uh, they bring Foreman in rush. He has time. He fires it. He got it to, uh, who is that? Oh, that's Julio Jones again. The Big 12 defense has got to figure out an answer to this Julio Jones problem. you got to get into halftime and figure this out. But Julio Jones has been absolutely killing you. He has. He's been basically murdering you through the air here in this game early on. Yeah, you just got to figure it out because he, when you go zone, he's picking apart the zone. When you go man on man, no man is going to be able to cover Hurley Jones. So it's just been, it's been interesting. You've been able to shut down Mike Evans completely. Amari Cooper has that one play. Uh, you've been doing pretty good outside of the Julio Jones thing. Looks like a five-man rush actually back out, but they bring a four-manner. She gets to the outside, and it's going to be, oh, it's not going to be sacked. I press it, shook it off. He gets out to Hunter Henry, picks up about six yards in the play. What a play by Dak Prescott, making sure he doesn't get sacked. Uh, they got pressure on him. They they really got in there <laughs> extremely well, but he shrugs off that sack, picks up huge six yards. It's Sean Elliott. Again, Deshaun Elliott was there to make a big-time play, but unfortunately was not able to uh, pay it off with a tackle there. Tony Jefferson with the tackle. Looks like it's going to be a four-man rush again. Alvin Kamara is there, so it likely is going to be a passing down. They don't really get run Alvin Kamara a lot. So they have a four-man rush. He's, they actually get pressure on him. He fires it to a wide-open oh, <laughs> Julio Jones. They finally get pressure on the guy, and their defense breaks down. First and goal, and it's... Again, it's been the Julio Jones show here today so far. I mean, again, I'll say it again. Mari Cooper has that one play. Mike Evans has zero catches. Uh, uh, Alvin Kamara has two. Hunter Henry has one. Jared Cook has zero. OBJ has one catch for nine yards. It's been Julio Jones. It hasn't been exactly run game, too, which is interesting. We haven't seen a run this drive. We haven't seen a run... Last drive uh, with the Big 12, which means they're both going away from the run, which is interesting considering they both have some great running backs. Alvin Kamara on the field for this play might indicate a passing down. Uh, looks like a four-man rush here by the Big 12. He fires it to Julio Jones, who actually is incomplete. I think that was Jason Verrett. Jason Verrett is another player that I think is one of my he, – he's one of the players that I did not expect to really enjoy watching defensively. I love watching Jason Verrett play corner. He really is one of my favorite players on this Big 12 defense. Looks like a two tight end set here with Hunter Henry and Jared Cook. Looks like it might be a four, five man rush. They break out, bring only a four man rush. It's time he gets it out to, I believe that was Nick Chubb, and he ends up picking up, what, two yards on the ground? Actually, it was to Jared Cook. I'm sorry. I thought it was Nick Chubb for some reason. Jared Cook with his first catch, which means both number two tight ends for this team, both teams. I have a catch in the game. So third and goal, 
chance to force a huge field goal for the Big 12 defense. Uh, Got to get a touchdown here for the SEC. So they go fire. You get it to Hunter Henry. who just walks into the end zone. And there we go. A different player is going. Hunter Henry's leaving. He's just, he's going home. He got his touchdown. He's going to take the football and leave. Great play. I don't know why Joe Judge is so mad. <laughs> Great play there by the defense. Unfortunately, for the Big 12, you couldn't figure out how to cover Hunter Henry. And, I mean, it's not like you were probably keyed in on that. You were like, how do we make sure Julio Jones does not kill us again? Which is interesting because Julio Jones has been the great player here early on. Uh, but he hasn't been exactly dominant. Uh, he hasn't gotten a touchdown is what I should say. Uh, so far, we, each team, we haven't had a duplicate touchdown yet. So, again, the SEC Giants have a Nick Chubb touchdown on the ground. You have, a uh, obviously, that Hunter Henry touchdown. And you have that huge Amari Cooper touchdown. And the Big 12 side of things, you had a Tyler Lockett touchdown, a, a Sterling Shepard touchdown, and a Mark Andrews touchdown. It's going to be interesting if we're going to get a repeat touchdown this drive, or maybe uh, Joe Mixon gets his first touchdown, or maybe a play that we didn't expect, like maybe Marquise Brown, or maybe... Uh, Danny Amendola, maybe he gets his first touchdown. It's going to be interesting. I don't know. Uh, you can't go non-repeating touchdowns forever. You're going to run out of players eventually. So looks like it's going to be a knee by Tyler Lockett. And again, Mahomes comes out into the field. He's, going to, he's likely going to lead his team on a nice little drive, just doing little dunk, dink and dunk passes, and he's likely going to get a touchdown. I mean, unless the defense figures out a way to stop this, this is what the Big 12 is going to do the entire game. Little dink and dunks. Little dink and dunk underneath. Pick up 10 yards. Little dink on an out route. Pick up 10 yards. Open over the middle. 20 yards. It's just it's what's going to happen. Five yard. Uh, actually, five, uh, five wide. They bring a four-man. Five-man rush, actually. He got it to Joe Mixon, but it's going to be incomplete. Broken up there. That brings up a second and 10. Maybe the SEC Giants can for first force their first punt. Now, they have, do have a turnover in this game with the Mark Andrews fumble. Yet to force a punt. We've only seen one punt this game. And that was by the SEC on the first drive. So, Patrick Mahomes goes shotgun here. I've yet to see him go, just let him go play action. He fires it to an open Tyler. Sterling Shepard breaks a tackle. He might be going all the way. 10 5 Touchdown, Sterling Shepard. And we get our first big play of the ball game for the Big 12. And Sterling Shepard gets his second touchdown of the ball game. Sterling Shepard has he's, he's increased his production significantly from that uh, playing game where he really did nothing and he kind of faded away down the stretch against the FCS Division II Division Three Bills when they needed another receiver to step up. But you know what? He hasn't done that. He didn't do it against the, the wild card. He became a decent playmaker. He wasn't an insanely great playmaker, and he has turned out big here in the divisional round against the SEC Giants. When he's needed, they, he turns up his production, and this has been a great ball game so far. Now, the Mountain West game, they were kind of ki they kind of killing him in this first. And if you're Emmanuel Ogba, you got to figure it out. you got to figure out how to get some pass rush on this this team. Uh, you have one sack, and that was by Earl Thomas. Uh, uh oh, that's an uh oh. If you're the Big Twelve, you need to figure out how to generate a pass rush with a four man rush. Uh, and if you're not, you gotta figure out how to blitz effectively. Uh, without giving up the slant. I mean, never mind. You're gonna have to give up a slant. But if you're blitzing, it's just it's it's really hard. It's a, it's. Figuring out how to stop this SEC offense is going to be complicated. Tredavious White brings it up to about the 24-yard line, 25-yard line they mark it to no loss for the Tredavious White return. It's just, I don't know. I don't know how you're going to figure it out if you're the the Big 12 defense. It's, it's going to be difficult. It really is going to be a difficult thing to figure out if you're the Big 12. I mean, they have such a great offensive line. They really do. If you're the the SEC, I think that's the SEC strength. Uh, that and the defense, although the defense has been forgettable here by the big the, by the SEC, but you got to figure out how to generate a four man rush. 
They bring... I don't know what's going on with Nick Chubb, but I haven't seen him in a while. They have Kamara out there again. He gets time. He fires it underneath to uh, OBJ that time. OBJ's second catch of the ball game picks up ten yard, two yards. And he's two receptions for 11 yards. It's interesting that OBJ is this unproductive. But, I mean, it's, it's understandable considering he's probably the number four option on this team. Uh, second and eight. Looks like a little bit of a blitz, but I expect at least one or two of those players to pop out of there. They bring out one. Fires it to a wide open Julio Jones, who's going to take it all the way down to the 42-yard line. Huge play by Julio Jones, and he's he's been killing it. I mean, you got to fit it. You got to figure out two things. If you're the Big 12 heading into halftime, you got to be looking at it. If you're Cliff Kingsbury and you're the defensive coordinator, your offense has been killing it. You probably don't even want to touch that. You, they got to figure out what changes they're going to make. Uh, you got to figure out two things. You got to figure out how to stop Julio Jones because he's been killing you. He has been your kryptonite here early on. And you've got to figure out how to generate a four man pass rush because this has not worked out early on. Julio Jones, could, I mean, Dak Prescott. It looks like a little bit of screen. They do go screen. Alvin Kamara has lots of running room. He does a little bit of a juke to pick up 10 yards, pick up that first down. And uh, Kamara has been effective through the air. I think we all knew that Kamara can be effective through the air. And it's, it's really specialty. And, I mean, if you're going to pass it a lot, Kamara is the running back to have on the field. Because, uh, let's be honest, Derrick Henry brings you nothing in the passing game. And Nick Chubb uh, it provides you something, but not as much as Alvin Kamara can bring it. They bring Blitz here, fires it to Hunter Henry. He's going to pick up about seven yards, considering that looked like that was going to be a loss of a yard. It's pretty impressive there by Hunter Henry. Hunter Henry has turned up his production a lot. Again, only three receptions for 17 yards, but one of those receptions was a touchdown. One of them was a pretty impressive seven-yard gain. So four minutes and 49 seconds remaining in the half. Uh, let's see if the, big, the SEC gets a touchdown quickly. That gives... Uh, Big 12 time enough to get a touchdown. If you don't want to get it too quickly for the Big 12, because you'd like to have a 7-point lead heading into halftime, then you get the ball so you can take that to a 14-point lead. So it looks like a little bit of a blitz here by the Big 12. They back out of it, go run to Alvin Kamara, who is just, he has not been effective on the ground. No gain there. But what he has been effective is now, and Nick Wyakowski on the, in the play, but what he has been so good at, and I honestly mean this, what, he has been so phenomenal at is the passing game. It's it's what Alvin Kamara brings to your team if you're the SEC. You have probably better runners in Derrick Henry and Nick Chubb. It's just his contributions through the air can be unmatched if you use him correctly. And he really can be a little bit of an X factor for you. So it looks like it's going to be run up the middle. They bring Kari blasting game onto the field. Looks like a little bit of a blitz here. They do go blitz, and he's going to be stopped. It's not They're not going to get this first down. Brings up a fourth and one, and it's going to be an interesting decision. Nice play there by made by Earl Thomas. Earl Thomas, despite not being on a team and him just being a normal free agent, has made some big-time plays here for this Big 12 defense. Fourth and one here. It's going to be an interesting decision. I think I run it again. I feel like I bring Derrick Henry onto the field eventually. Uh, I really do believe that. Derrick Henry is probably your best downhill runner. Nick Chubb's a great one, but... Derrick Henry is probably your best power back. And if you don't, like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to say. But if you, you want to run it up the middle and try to pick up this first down, which I feel like you have to try. Actually, they go field goal here with Josh Lambo. <sighs> Kick is up. It is good. Oh, field, uh, injury on the field, Evan Jenkins. Uh-oh. I said, oh, that's an injury to watch out for if the SEC Giants are able to move on to the next round. And I don't see Evan Jenkins for the rest of the game. Um, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to roll that die, which I gotta roll the die soon. I gotta set it up for the Independence game. Figure out if, how long. I hope I roll a one and Ziggy Ons is out for a game. And I also gotta figure out if Brandon Sheriff got injured for the entire game or. And I got to roll a die if he just came, if he came back eventually. Returnable here by Tyler Lockett. Brings it up to the midfield. Ooh, he's going to get out. He got absolutely stuffed at the 22-yard line. But brings up a first and 10. Great play by K.J. Wright. First and 10. Come back onto the field. Uh, 
it's been all Mahomes here. Let's be honest. They haven't run it with Mixon really at all. Only seven rushes, 19 yards. Again, they didn't run it a lot with Nick Chubb last drive. Uh, the SEC Giants did. It's been a lot of the passing game here, which I expected. It, that's the way you want to go if you were the Big 12. Uh, the SEC's really threat is the ground game. So Mahomes goes shotgun here. Ideally, you score a touchdown here if you're this offense. But you have time. He throws it over the middle of Mark Andrews. And, I mean, <laughs> Mahomes will take the – this is his – this is a great offense if you could – run it in the Big 12. The Big 12 is running a perfect offense here. If you want to upset a team, this is how you upset a team, the SEC. I thought that maybe he would have to make some really tough throws if they wanted to. He would have to be a magician. He has not had to be a magician here at all today. He's had to be able to make right reads and throw it. They bring a little bit of blitz here. Mixon picks it up. He fires it and completes it to Danny Amendola. Nice catch there by Danny Amendola. And uh, Danny Amendola hasn't been super involved in this offense, but has at least contributed a little. Marquise Hollywood-Brown, again, uh, the number three receiver for this team. I've yet to see him on this field. Well, I've seen him on the field. I've yet He has yet to make a catch. But Danny Amendola, at least a little bit involved in this offense. He's provided something off the bench. Provided a nice little slot receiver that you can get it to. Uh, again, I mean, he'll take this. I mean, that was a difficult throw, but... He hasn't had to be a magician here yet today. Run to Joe Mixon, who picks up a good seven yards. And uh, an actual run that I was impressed with by Joe Mixon. Hasn't been a lot today. Now, I, I really do believe that Joe Mixon's a great player in the NFL. It looks like it's, we're coming up on the two-minute warning. Uh, but Joe Mixon hasn't been extremely helpful here today for the Big 12. I mean, it's been a lot of relying on Patrick Mahomes. I mean, the ground game has really done not a lot. Now, it's not to say the SEC has had a lot going on the ground game either. Nick Chubb has provided not a lot, and Alvin Kamara has only provided his abilities through the air. Second and three, let's see what they do here. Shotgun for Patrick Mahomes. They bring a blitz. Got, gets it to Sterling Shepard, who's just kind of tripped up by Stephon Gilmore, but he does end up making the catch. 34-yard line. Mahomes is on pace for a 600-yard passing game and eight touchdowns. Now that's just that's he could still get 30 more yards here and another touchdown. So he could be on pace for 660 yards and five, 10 touchdowns. He's been insanely productive through the air. Mahomes goes shotgun here again. They bring a little bit of a blitz. He scrambles out he gets time he throws a he was he was throwing that ball away he threw that ball away to make sure he wasn't going to get sacked and lose yardage now again i don't know if the sec's gotten a sack yet i don't know if anyone can correct me on that but i don't believe they have it's been a uh, as much as i've been talking hey everybody this is ggb co-host poppers coming back into it i'm sorry that uh this happened i actually were recording this after the fact normally i watch the games and i record my audio at the same time for some reason, I've lost this last clip of audio. I couldn't find it anywhere. I swear, I keep a pretty tight system, and when I move my my videos from my phone onto the computer, which I then download, and then I delete off of the computer so that I can save some storage. Uh, but, if, weirdly enough, it just doesn't seem to be here, which is weird. It's very weird, because, again, I, I run a pretty tight system, but... Shotgun here for Patrick Mahomes with two running backs set. He has a lot of time. He's scrambling. He has a lot of room to run. He's going to slide. He's going to probably pick up this first down. It is. It's a first down for this this uh, Big 12 offense. And it's hey, I, I think any sane person for a, a Big 12 fan would 100% take having a four-point lead at halftime. Very much they could have a, they could have a seven-point lead at halftime. And Mahomes has played out of his mind well. He really has. He he looked, i, I got to be honest, even though he's the best quarterback in the NFL, he's the best quarterback in Madden, he looked bad in the playing game. He looked bad in the wild card matchup. But he has looked fantastic here today. He has a lot of time. He's eventually pressured, but he's able to get it off to Sterling Shepard, who's run backwards for about five yards, but still picks up the first down. They take a timeout. And again, if they get a touchdown here... They can be up by 11 points at halftime, which is really good. It's a really good situation to be in if you are the Big 12 Cardinals. Again, 
they could be if they win this game, they're moving on to the divisional round. I mean, the conference championship. I don't think anyone expected them to be there. So shotgun here for Patrick Mahomes. Uh, four man rush. He has plenty of time. He scrambles out to his right. He fires on the run. Who? Oh my God! What a touchdown pass to Mark Andrews. What a beautiful pass. Just like beautiful by Patrick Mahomes. Absolute dime. He's throwing out here today, but yeah, I believe, I mean, he's seriously been phenomenal here. He has really been good here today, and I mean, oh, wait, did he get his both feet inbounds? I'd have to see that again. I didn't, I didn't know if he did. It looked like a little bit like he couldn't have. They're reviewing this, right? This might not be a touchdown. Let's see, oh, they're celebrating. Are they going to review that? Because I think that looked close. They do. They take, why would the cards take a timeout? Oh no, it's the booth review. It's a booth review. That makes sense. But yeah, uh, did he get both feet in bounds? I don't know. Oh, let's watch this. I think you can make the argument that his toe was down. His left toe was down before. Oh, uh, I think that's closer than it. It probably should be. Mark Andrews had a lot of room to get both feet down, and uh, if he didn't, if this turns out to be overruled, I doubt it's gonna be overruled though. It's too close. Yeah, it's not gonna be overruled. But yeah, I mean, the, Mark Andrews tried to make that pass, even though it was like perfect by Mahomes. Uh, he tried to make that pass, not caught. But again. They're probably going to be up by 11 points. Extra point pending. Let's see if Justin Tucker makes it. Snap's good. Holds good. Kick is up. And it is good. You're up by 11 points. And I think any sane Big 12 fan would all 100% take that. Remember, they were underdogs in this game. They were in the wild card round. SEC number 3 overall seed. And this is why that play-in game was so important. And... Uh, the, the FCS Division 2, Division 3 playing game against the Big 12 is looking less important because, I mean, I don't know. They're, they're, I don't know. I mean, it could be a closer game against the Independents than what is going on right now in the in the Big Apple. I mean, they've traveled to New York City and are putting on a show. This offense is putting on a show against this SEC defense, which was supposed to be one of the better defenses. It's going to be returnable by Tredavious White. He's going to return it. He's going to get tackled around the 23-yard line. But, yeah, this was supposed to be one of the best defenses in the entire tournament. I mean, you look at the SEC defense, it is extremely talented. The defensive line is full of stars. Yeah, Julio Jones has had a phenomenal day. I don't think anyone would disagree with that. But I think the major problem with this team is outside of Julio Jones, who are you throwing it to? Because Amari Cooper had a great play in this quarter. But outside of that, he's done nothing. Mike Evans has done nothing. Nick Chubb has done absolutely nothing on the ground. Absolutely nothing. Alvin Kamara has been somewhat helpful through the air. Again, useless on the ground. No ground game, apparently. Uh, and it has been rough on this SEC team. Empty set here for Julio Jones. They bring a four-man blitz. Fires it underneath to Alvin Kamara, who trucks a guy. Absolutely destroys, I believe, Jason Verrett on that play. And they take a timeout. Now, there's 45 seconds left. Let's say you go down the field, you get a field goal before halftime. It's a one-possession game again, although I'm going to be honest, I wouldn't go for two after halftime. Uh, but field goal is very helpful here if you are the SEC Giants, and that's what you're going for. I mean, it's very huge. They bring Alvin Kamara on the field. It makes sense because it's passing down, and he's the most versatile passing back for this team. Four-man rush, it looks like, by the Big 12. They bring a blitz, it looks like. He's going to get sacked. And, uh... Despite not having the best offensive line, the Big 12 has produced a decent amount of sacks here today. Good sack there by the Big 12 Cardinals. You know what's weird? I see Malcolm Brown in this like little intro every time. I swear to goodness, I have never seen Malcolm Brown make a play. And it's not like I've seen everyone else make plays. And like I feel like I've never seen him on the field. 3rd and 10, it's a big 3rd down conversion. Four-man rush, he has plenty of time. He fires it underneath, but that's going to be broken up to Hunter Henry. And I mean that Big 12 is going to have two timeouts, 37 seconds left to get another field goal, put a, go up by 14 points, and this, this offense really kind of hurt themselves. they take taking all those timeouts. Now they have one timeout. 
but the, the Cardinals have two timeouts, and they have time to drive down this football field if they want to. It looks like they're going to bring uh, try and block this. Uh, they do, but unfortunately for them, it's not going to even come close to working. It's going to be returnable by Tyler Lockett, but he's going to be quickly tackled at the 31-yard line. But 30 seconds left. 30 seconds left. They can do a lot in 30 seconds. Remember, this team has a lot of explosion against Sterling Shepard. You look at those stats. Sterling Shepard's been huge today. Tyler Lockett's been weirdly quiet, but I kind of expected that with uh, Stephon Gilmore covering him. But, uh, I mean, Sterling Shepard has stepped up as the number two guy, and I really thought he might be locked down considering the depth on this uh, these corners. I mean, Tredavious White is the number two, and there is no he is a very good corner. So shotgun here with Joe Mixon on the field, who has done really nothing this game. But I doubt it's going to do anything here. Fires it. Oh, it's getting picked off by no other than Stefan Gilmore. I feel like I was just saying his name, although I did watch this before, so I kind of uh, knew that was coming. But I got to give the excitement like I didn't know it was coming. That is obviously a very good read by Stefan Gilmore. But and he's done a great job of locking down Tyler Lockett this game, but, I mean... You got to figure out how to lock down Sterling Shepard because he's been killing you through the air. And then Mark Andrews has also done an extremely good job in this game. But yeah, you're this defense. Uh, if you're this offense, you have 27 seconds. You're at the 34 yard line of the team. A field goal should be a guaranteed, especially with Josh Lambeau at kicker. I think you should be shooting for a touchdown. You have a timeout, so uh, I think you have plenty of time. Just don't throw it in bounds, obviously. Dak Prescott's going to go shotgun here. Four-man rush, although they it gets it out to, I believe, Odell Beckham Jr. And that play, pretty productive day for Odell Beckham Jr. Uh, third catch, 23 yards, especially for the number four guy. I mean, you listed him, and you got Julio ahead of him. You have, they finally call a timeout, which they go to let a good, what, 10 seconds strip off the clock before doing that. I mean... Do you have it? I mean, you probably have time to run one play to the end zone, but I doubt it's going to be a good play, and you might be just putting up in danger. So, I don't know. I feel like I wouldn't even try it to be too risky for me. Yeah, they're going to just try to attempt this field goal. Ryan Tannehill holding. Snaps good, holds good. Kick is up, and it is good with seven seconds remaining on the clock. They are down by eight points. I, I'd bet money that the... The Big 12 just runs this clock out for the rest of the half. But outside of that, I mean, the SEC has done a good job with the Big 12 being hot, staying in this ballgame. The SEC offense has done a great job here today. Uh, but the SEC defense needs to step it up. I understand you just had the pick by Stephon Gilmore, and that was stepping it up. You get, you get yourself within eight points, but so far... The Big 12 just seems to have been able to drive on command. They just they haven't seemed to have been able to be stopped yet, which is... Oh, Tyler Lockett's actually going to bring this out. He's going to bring it to about the 21-yard line. I guess there is no risk outside of, like, fumbling it, which actually I think I wouldn't have taken it out for that reason. Andrew Beck's on the bench. I like to just point out that Andrew Beck has been an underrated part of this offense. Uh, he has had some key blocks so far. Andrew Beck's a guy that, is in the on in the wild card round, he did an extremely good job. In the playing game, he's done an extremely good job. And what we've seen of him today, he's done a great job. Coming to an end of this episode, obviously you can see he's about to take the knee here. But I'd like to just say that thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to tune in tomorrow. But uh, I, I really enjoy you guys watching. But here I am with the sign-off. Hey, everybody. This is GGB. Coast Pepper saying, adios amigos.